and welcome back to Tribal Wolf TV and my build of the real grade Shin Sinanju. Alright, so first step in the manual is the feet. And what I like to do is I like to just go through and take a specific series of steps and cut out all the pieces I need from it, from the sprues. And just get it all laid out and ready to go so that I can just put it all together without having to go back and forth between the sprue and the piece and the sprue and the piece and do it that way. This makes it a lot easier because I can, especially with stuff where it's times two and there's no difference between the parts and you don't have to worry about left and right. Now, as we're going through and I'm doing this, these, this build video, if there's something on the sprue that I notice that could cause an issue, like maybe accidentally snipping off the wrong part, I've done that one, I will point things out. Um, I'll leave it on the sprue and then show you exactly what I mean on the sprue. If there's something specific on the outside edge or some of these pegs that you need to keep. And if there's something there that might cause problems where if you cut wrong, it may make it a little bit harder to put your kit together, I'll point those out. Otherwise, expect to see this kind of layout where I have everything kind of laid out and knolled as it's called so that we can just go through the assembly and how it goes together. All right, so on the feet, and this is one of those frame pieces like I was talking about in the, the unboxing video. So you'll want to kind of just kind of go like this and just work all of these joints a little bit. Get them loosened up. Because as I said, if you, if you don't do this part, it can cause issues later on where you may catch and bind and break pieces. I've done that one too. Now, the other thing that it says in the book, in the manual, is to pop this piece off. It's just on a ball joint and just set it off to the side. So then, first step is this little piece, these pieces here. And they just fit together just like this. And there's a little bit of movement there, but not a lot. So that's how that goes and it doesn't really matter which direction you put it in because it's gonna both sides have the same thing because it's designed they're designed to be interchangeable and then this so the piece here with the, the ring around it is the one that's supposed to be in the hole just like that so let me just go like this real quick we'll zoom in here and focus in a little bit there we go and just like that so that is that beginning part all right And then just do the same thing for the other side. This piece just fits right into here like that. And then this one here goes in here. Don't forget to take that piece off and set it off to the side. And work this a little bit. Almost forgot my own instructions there. And my own recommendations. Could have been bad later on. Okay, so then we put together the back piece, the piece that goes on this part here. So that is this piece here, like so, and then this piece here. And it goes like this. just pops right into here right yeah it goes like this right yeah, hang on ah okay so it actually just it clips into here 
like that. There we go. So like that. And as you'll see, I'll make mistakes or get confused on something. But, hey, I'm going to show up. I'm not going to make myself look perfect because there's times when I get confused on stuff too. Especially when the only instructions are in Japanese. And then this piece, these pieces right here, this is pretty clear in the pictures. Goes just like that. All right? So let's fit into there. There we go. And you'll know you've got it because it'll be, it won't be fighting it, and it'll rotate like this, which is what it's supposed to do, and then clips right into that back piece there. show that again on this other side here grab this piece and it goes like this right into there and then clips right into that spot right there and it might take you a minute to get it fully lined up and that's okay because you can pull this piece out a little bit to get it lined up once you got it so it actually moves on there properly and then just push it in and it will click right into place and lock in all right next up we've got additional pieces here now this piece slips right into here just like that and it's a nice tight fit doesn't really want to move once you get it in there and this piece just presses right onto the front of this just like that so now you're starting to get what's well, starting to look a little bit like a foot also in that step this piece here then presses into the bottom so, and you look at it, and you kind of see the shape of it. So you've got these little prongs here. And they match up with this little spot here. Oh, no, I'm actually incorrect. They actually match up with this spot here. I was looking at the wrong thing in the manual just like that <laughs> and like I said I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna show it Oop. that's the other drawback to these that's the one drawback to these kits is sometimes they'll pop apart a little bit on you as you're working on it is the nature of a snap together kit but if you've got the patience for them to work with them these look really good when they're all said and done they really do and they're well worth the time especially these real grades and you'll see why soon enough so we'll do the same thing for the other foot because this is my first time building this kit I got the opportunity to build it a little sooner than I was expecting to be able to from a friend of mine who was overseas and got to go to one of the actual Gundam stores and picked it up for me. An incredible gift from a very incredible person and I figured I'd just build it for my show because it's well worth it. All right, next step is a quick one. It's one of the black pieces here. And this just goes in here and you can just kind of see how it mates up because it's going to follow the contour lines. If 
I can get it to actually line up properly here because it's just going to sit right on this piece here. It's not going to really fit into anything yet. Because there's not really anything for it to fit into yet. Okay, It's just going to match up with those lines. What's going to kind of fix that in place is are these pieces here, the red, the armor pieces. And these are going to push into this spot here, these two pegs on the side here. This is, these are going to press into the two pegs on the side. Sorry about that. You can see for a minute. I just had to see what I was doing here. So one side is going to push in on that side. One side. The other one's going to clip on just like that. And it's going to kind of click. You probably can hear that. And then there's that. And it's really starting to look like a foot now. There's a couple final parts to this one. Now, first off, you got this piece here that fits on, makes the actual final piece of the toe there. And then this piece here. That makes the heel. get it to line up properly here. There we go. And there you go. So we'll do that again on this side. Just like this. Whoop. piece here mates up with these pegs here ah. I drop it there on the side of that frame piece and then right into the top pegs of that black piece and again on this side like so and into that groove on the top there This one will go on a little bit easier than the last one. Or maybe not. There we go. And there are the feet. Alright, so next up we'll move on to the the uh, the shins and that, those pieces. That's going to be a little more complex. All right, so before we move on to the shins, uh, there are a couple other little pieces that we need to do before in preparation for that. And with that, I noticed as I was trimming them out, I thought I'd go over this with you. So Bandai doesn't do a lot of undergating, but every once in a while you find it on certain kits, on certain pieces. So some of this Mickey plating, so. cut this piece out you'll notice I don't know if I can get close enough to actually show it to you here let me see if I can get it to focus on it so if you look Right on there, you can kind of see it there. There's a little nub that sticks up. That's where the sprue actually connects to the bottom. So that when you cut it, when you snip that sprue, you're not going to damage this outer edge finish because it's going to be exposed and actually show. So what you do is once you snip that off, just take your, I use a pair of, 
nice little flush cutters. And just snip on the back side of that and kind of take off most of the rest of that nub. And there's a, you'll find that every once in a while on some of their stuff. They don't do a lot of it. It'd be nice if they did on a lot more of the, the outer armor pieces, but even then they don't a lot of times. So, but we've got a few little pieces to put together here in preparation. So first they have you do these ones here. These are just little side pieces and they have these little black pieces that insert in just like that. Which really gives it a nice look with that black and that plated gold. And then you do just do the same thing on this one here. And then on the other side as well. And I'm knocking pieces out of the way here. <laughs> Just real quick and simple on these ones. They just press into place. Okay, the next thing it has you do is this one here. And then this is just a piece with a little thruster nozzle on it. One for each side, just like that. Okay. Now, Next up is the larger thruster piece that actually goes on the leg. Now this has a couple thruster pieces. And this one, you would think, <laughs> looking at it, that it would go on like this. Well, no, it doesn't. That tapered piece is actually the bottom of the thruster. So it actually just pushes on like that. These ones here, and because these are being going on to that kind of matte silver, and these are just plain gray, gives it a nice little offset color separation, which looks really good. And then do the same thing on this side, and everything just pushes on snaps into place nicely. Just make sure everything's flush. Okay, the other thing on this one, let me grab it here. I just need to grab that sticker sheet. Here's that sticker sheet. Now this piece gets two of these stickers that are on here. And it gets number 15 and number 21. So 15 is this one here. And then 21 is this here. And the easiest way I found to get these off is to just kind of take and fold the edge a little bit. Take a good pair of tweezers and just grab it like that. And then line it up with where it goes on here. And sometimes it might take you a couple tries to get it where it actually should be. Just like that. So there's that one. And we'll do the same thing with 21. And there's that one. 
and you can go in and a good way to go over these to get them down a little bit more flush is a, uh, a cotton swab you can go over a cotton swabs because what I found is with these like these metal metallic stickers if you go over them with something hard like your tweezers or a toothpick you can oftentimes scrape off this metal and that kind of defeats the purpose of it so a, a uh, q-tip or a cotton swab works really good for kind of pushing those all down into place you can kind of do the same thing with um, water slide decals too and the what we're doing that with the water slide decals that will also help push out the water and make it stick this one here All good. Okay. And lastly, we've got these pieces here. Again, this is just taking some of that Mechie plate gold pieces and inserting. These pieces into the sides. So these two little black pieces get pushed into those there. Just like this. Boom. And same thing on this side here. And there we go. Give me just a moment, I'll get everything set up to do the rest of the leg armor, and we'll keep going. Alright, so moving on to the rest of the legs. Now you'll see in the parts here that there are a couple pieces here specifically that we put together in the previous steps. Those will now be assembled into the full leg structure. And here are the frame pieces. So I've got this divided out between left and right. So you start, this is that frame piece again. Now they tell you to pull this down and rotate all the way around. Okay. And basically this is the front of it. This is the back. Again, there's several pieces here where you'll want to if you look at this you will want to move this because see all those internal those sliding pieces there if you don't work this a little bit you'll run into some issues if things bind and catch if those aren't worked a little bit if they don't move smoothly so you want to do that now before you put all the pieces that we're going to be putting on here because sometimes they might catch and those pieces will break <clears throat> now step one of assembling this is we got to build the subframe for the armor to sit on and that begins with these pieces here one goes like this yeah where's the pegs there we go goes just like this this one is its mirror image and fits onto the other side like so and this is the beginning of your knee pieces. 
Next, we have these large outer pieces here. And these. Fit around. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Okay. I made a mistake. This you actually don't have to flip down. I misread the instruction manual again. This just sits like that. And then one piece. make sure there's no major differences for the most part a lot of these parts tend to be fairly interchangeable but they specifically note in the manual that this one is the one that you want I see a little spot there that's going to cause me trouble, so let's get that taken care of real quick. Just take a little... This is a leftover from cutting it off the sprue, a little nub that's sticking up, because it's a spot that you can't get to. Okay, so yeah, they want you to rotate it just like that. That's my mistake. That's where it's getting hung up. And then they specifically denote that the one with the holes should be right in here, like this. And then this one clips on the other side. Next, we've got this piece here and part of the reason I lay out all my parts like this it makes it easier to go through step by step but also you can see just how many parts go into this so one leg is half of these so this piece just fits right on the front here then we've got a couple pieces to assemble before we can start putting them on so we've got this piece here this is the outer lay, the outer of the shin. And we got a couple pieces that will go on to it. And I found with these little pieces like this, these small guys here, it's easier often to put the piece that fits into it in first before putting it on the main piece. So this little tiny bit here pop in there like so it just moves like that and then you pop it right into here onto this piece here and it just mates in just like that then on the outside of this or on the inside rather you will take one of the previous pieces and I just got to double check which one ah so this one here is the one that fits on here. Goes like that, just onto there, just like that. And then this piece here fits into this spot here, and it kind of moves a little bit. This is the ankle armor. So there's that one. And then we've got something similar on this side here, only we're just using this piece here. And it's going to pop. Where is it? There we go. Right in. Ah, helps if I have it the right direction. Right into this little hole here, like so. And then these booster that we assembled previously fits into that spot there and then the opposite one of these goes into here and 
this piece here will fit right into there. And now these can be assembled together. However, we will now be also inserting the foot. So first, what I found usually works best is to pop this in first because on this particular kit you've got these fake uh, mo you know fake uh, hydraulic cylinder look going on here so if you slip this in and get it made it up then that piece goes and in, pops into that little spot there is where it's supposed to go and then this piece connects on the other side just the same way and now we've got the a lot of the basic undercarriage done on it so next we've got these pieces here and these will fit like this and like this and then you flip it over top is how they say to do it so that this is your right leg and we've got this one yellow piece here that fits right over this little peg here real simple real easy Boop. so we've got that then this little front shin piece fits right over that peg there and locks that in place. On the back side, then we take this and it goes right over these three pegs here. As you see, it's got the pegs there that match up with it. And it... There we go. Sometimes getting your angles right on these can be a little bit of a pain. Sometimes you might need to move a piece around a little bit to get it to your, the right angle on it to get it onto the pieces. I've run into that a lot with these kits where things don't always want to quite match up the way you want them to until you start moving parts around. Next we've got the upper thigh pieces which are these here. This is the rear piece, and it just fits onto, there's a slot here in the armor, or in the frame, I should say, that it just kind of pops into there, just like that. And then you've got the front piece, which is held on by these pegs here. That's why I put the back on first. There we go. There's the upper thigh. Now, these outside armor pieces, we got a couple of them. This is the left side, which goes right in here like so. These just push into, oh, and again, there are, let's see if I can get that apart without breaking anything here, because I just noticed a problem area. I've got a little bit of nub there, right here, just sticking up because this was a piece that I didn't see that was undergated. So I'll just take my razor knife. You got to be careful and just trim that up real quick. Cut it down and trim it up so that it's not sticking out and meets. There we go nice and flush and now it isn't going to interfere with the movement of this piece here. And then this piece here, this is the opposite side, just slips over top and now that one piece that we assembled before, oops, There we go, saved it. And you know what? 
Stuff like that will happen to you. I promise. You will pull on something a little harder than you expected to and then it'll pop off. So that there moves a little bit. Oh, and there's another one of those little extra sprue pieces that I missed. So we'll just do the same thing like we did on the other side. Boom. There we go. So that's all put together now and looking the way it should. Okay, so cleaned up on that back side there. Now, there is the other, one of the other pieces that we assembled previously. It will just fit this way, right onto here. Oh, I keep looking at the wrong thing. It fits in like this. So this piece here slides into here. This piece here slides into here. Just like that. And we've got the front armor piece here. Which fits like this. Right into there. And this has movement too, so that if you're moving and posing it, you know, you can get a little bit of extra articulation out of it. And this piece here moves, exposes that thruster bit, and then this piece can move as well, kind of, and expose those little fake cylinder, hydraulic cylinders. Now, we have, because we've got this opening on this side, and only one side actually has a little thing that's actually used. They do this little piece here, and I see a little spot that's going to cause me trouble if I don't fix. Well, another nub mark right there. And then this just fits ah, if I could hang on to it so there's a little notch a little piece sticking up there and a little notch in this piece here only on the one side so that can tell you which direction it needs to go in there we go basically seals that part in there so that it doesn't look odd with this big hole in the side. Now we've also got this is the rest of the knee here and this will fit over top of this just like that and then we've got to assemble an extra another piece for this side here and this leg will be complete so this here is that one piece that we assembled earlier with the couple thrusters and the stickers that I showed you so this will go like a couple of these pieces here are used for it so this one goes on to here this one, this one goes on to here, and then this one, this big piece here, is the main cover. And it's right on to here, just like that. Okay? And these can then open up like so. And all of that just fits 
right onto here, onto the side of the leg. And that is one complete leg. Now, I'm going to pull this off real quick, just because I want to show something. One of the reasons, so as I've been talking about, you know, there's that all that under frame that moves. And, and some people wonder, well, why does all that move? Well, there's a couple different reasons. It's not so evident on this one, but every, like this knee joint, it splits open and separates from the rest of it. So if this was not worked previously, it may stick and or if your pieces aren't quite fitted right, you can they'll get caught and you may try and force it and break it or these pieces in this internal frame may catch. And if that happens, I did this on unfortunately a real grade kit of wing zero custom and I had a piece in here that I didn't work it before I put it all together and when I went to pose it and move that leg it the f internal frame piece actually hung up and broke the internal frame now you can in a lot of cases order replacement uh, in play of uh, replacement sprues from Bandai if you want it can get pretty pricey though to do so because you have to go directly through Bandai and they have to be shipped to you overseas so they can get kind of pricey so the more you can kind of know be aware of some of that stuff especially if you've never assembled a real grade kit before it's something definitely to keep in mind so there's that that is one fully assembled leg all right, I will get the other one put together and we will move on to the um, next step in the next video. All right, see you in the next one.